Welcome to The Grow Show with me as your host, Joe Camerato. I am an entrepreneur who created my company, National Business Capital, from literally zero dollars out of my spare bedroom to over two billion in business loans secured for entrepreneurs nationwide. Since 2007, I have seen just about every type of business. I provide money and help entrepreneurs access capital to scale fast, but I also know that it's possible for you as you scale to replace yourself, to build systems, processes, and great teams of people that can live on without you so you can actually enjoy your life and your company can still grow. I will not only tell you the peaks and valleys of my story, but I will also bring on world-class entrepreneurs to tell their stories and share their lessons on their growth journeys. Welcome to The Grow Show. All right, all right. Welcome to The Grow Show. Always have great guests on The Grow Show, uh, but have a great guest today, uh, Alana Golan. And uh, she is going to talk to us about helping you take the leap. So if you're an entrepreneur or wanting to be an entrepreneur and want to make that leap, I want to bring it to the next level. Um, you're going to enjoy this conversation. Uh, so Alana is the founder and CEO of Leap Academy, uh, helping professionals leap uh, their career. Also the host of the Leap Show podcast. Uh, she moved from an F-16 uh, flight instructor and the first commander in her squad um, through tech entrepreneurship and now teaching others how to grow themselves. Uh, clients Come to Leap Academy, they know they want more from their careers, but are not sure what or how to get there. Um, well, thank you for being on the show today. You're thank welcome. you so much, Joe. It's exciting. So I, I'm excited to hear about, you know, you went from this, like from a, an F-16, you know, flight instructor to then like founding a company. And you've got an interesting story because you went to found a company and then there was, I think, some some real serious issues. And then you, I guess, figured it out again. So I, I like really would love to, you know, share with the audience, like just kind of a little about you, your story, your journey, and um, I love it. and how you're helping people take that leap. I love it, Joe. So um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. So I came from a place where I felt pretty successful in the military. I moved to tech. I started at Intel, moved to different startups, so all the way to vice president. So in general, I felt very successful in my career. Um, and so, but, but I did get burned out with a lot of flying. So when a friend came to me and said, hey, Lana, let's start a startup together, I got really excited. I thought that would be the dream. Um, Little did I know that um, it's going to blow my face. I didn't take that into account. Um, but as we talked, there is no smooth sailing in entrepreneurship. So um, we did raise capital for that startup. Um, they valued their company at almost $5 million. Um, it was a very exciting time. Um, but um, the day I left my company and you know came to start this like full time, um, my co-founder actually threw me out of the business. Um, and it, it was incredible that within 24 hours, I felt, you know, I lost my job. I lost my salary. I lost the investment, the startup, everything. And the truth is the biggest thing was my ego went down the drain. Um, I didn't understand how on earth did I get myself into that situation? How did I not see it coming? And that threw me into a pretty interesting downhill spiral because I think when you're in general a very driven and high achiever, um, first of all, you kind of think that these things will not happen to you. Are they going to happen to someone else? But here I was. But also, I don't th I, you know, suddenly my I realized for the first time that my identity was totally attached to my title, to the company. I was always Ilana, the VP, Ilana, the, the founder, right? Like I was always attached uh, my identity and my self-worth to my title. And suddenly I was a nobody. <laughs> so it was like an overwhelming um fear of what just happened to me. And I think also just not knowing what's next was a really, really, really hard time that most people don't re realize how hard it is to lose that clarity, especially when you've been an overachiever and over knew what's the next step. You knew the college, you knew, you know, what you need to do. And suddenly I had no clue. Like, am I looking for a job and I'm looking to start something? And that threw me off. So 
I, at that point, it was so hard, Joe, that I decided that if I ever get out of that situation, I have to tell the world how. So that's Sleep Academy. That's my podcast. That's everything I do. Because at some point, I did start leaping again and again, and again, and again. I started my own company. I sold it. You know, we can talk more. But um, you know, I, I, I've invested in over a hundred companies by now. I sit on advisory. I sit on boards and public boards and paid boards. I'm a public speaker, etc. I created such an amazing portfolio career. And I realized that I actually have a technique and it's a system to leap again and again and again, whether it's to leadership, whether it's to a company, whatever it is, it's literally a system and it works. Um, and I don't know why nobody was teaching this. Um, so that's the purpose of Leap Academy for every single person who is driven to reinvent themselves, leap their careers so that they can live the life that they want. Nice. That's awesome. So you... Uh... <clears throat> What was the company that you that you founded, grew, and uh, and sold? It was called Stia. So it was a uh, uh, stories in your pocket. Um, so basically, the idea was that memory is the only thing we can't search for today. Um, it's actually a funny story because um, the idea was to create a memory in your pocket. You know, we didn't have Google Timeline at that time. Like all these things didn't really exist yet. Um, so it was kind of really innovative for its time. And I knew that I'm traveling a lot. I'm going to places. I'm not a journalist. I don't blog and I lose it. So if somebody says, Hey, you know, where, you know, give me that amazing day in San Francisco or send me that two week in Costa Rica. I don't remember the name of the places I need to now start, you know, looking for Excel sheets and whatever. Uh, there should be a better way. And I still believe this should be a better way. Um, the funny thing is that it actually um, took on a life of its own, just like happens to a lot of techno, you know, technology. And it actually went viral in real estate, not in uh, travelers and, and kind of oh, wow. in pocket yeah. initially <laughs> meant. Um, it went completely viral. I became, I, I was invited to keynote and I was standing right in front of the CEO of DocuSign and right after the CEO of Zillow. So it actually looked like I knew what I was doing in real estate, <laughs> which I didn't. Um, but right after that, we had um, two M&A offers, one big venture that was, you know, trying to figure out if I want to build this to a billion plus dollar business, which I did not. I didn't like the industry. And I chose the uh, exit route. Um, nice. Yeah, Very funny exciting. story. Yeah, you never really know. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And, yeah. you know, so, you know, um, you know, going from, because, so you were in, um, you were in the military, correct? Yeah. Yes. And you were in the military in Israel? Yes, military in Israel. When we were, um, again, it's compulsory. So when you're 18, everybody goes. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. But are there things that you took from being, you know, in the military that you took into, you know, entrepreneurship? Oh, such a good question. So many yeah. things, Joe. I, you know, I always say that I feel like as much as I, you know, appreciate the education system, I really don't think that it prepares us well enough to the future of work today. Um, at no, least not. No, for absolutely me. not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not even. Not even and close. I, it's know, actually pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I studied electric engineering. Where is that and where is, you know, where I, I am today? All the rest was scraping my knees to learn management, to learn leadership, to learn sales, to learn management. You know, it's like it doesn't make sense. Um, but actually, that real life experience in the military taught me so much. Um, and I can't even count the things, but you know, first of all, I was giving feedback sometimes to people who had 30 years more experience than I ever will, right? Um, and having these crucial conversations, know your audience, know how to, con you know, create a message that will resonate and not um, intimidate, but on the other hand, will resonate. All of these things are nuances that changed everything for me because that makes you a better sales that makes you a better coach that makes you a better leader um and that's where i got a lot of these skills um and also just dealing with uncertainty and fear and new things um and not being afraid of of doing yeah. the hard things um because there are going to be hard things all the time and i feel like sometimes in school we're like so 
cushioned and everything needs to be a and you know the perfection which is exactly what's holding us back by the way after that so it taught me a lot in terms of just doing the things and experimenting and trying different things and i that was the biggest school for me for sure yeah it's it's, it's interesting i was talking i literally interviewed an f6 uh, f16 pilot um um yesterday and mm -hmm. and she was just you know we, we talked about discipline and then like the fear and uncertainty and you know obviously in the military those are <laughs> very important things mm -hmm. but they're also really important in entrepreneurship and and you know you brought up you know uncertainty and fear that's probably the biggest one in business and for what you're doing and taking the leap a lot of it is the uncertainty and fear it's the unknown you have to go out now and create whatever it is and you know, uh, and you have to do it on your own. You don't have no one to report to, so you have to be disciplined. Right. Yeah, for sure. So, no, and, and and again, I think the fear is normal. I think one of the things that um, we are taught is to always try to, um, the fear is not okay, or only some people are afraid. And that's not true. Everybody's afraid. The only question is, what do you do about it? Um, yeah. So I think there's a big, you know, I mean, there's a saying that when you're willing to continue, when most others stop, you're willing to, you will have the life that most other will only dream of. And I think it's just a beautiful yeah. quote that just portrays that vision so well. hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. What do you think that, you know, cause you're helping all these people take leaps, you're either going through your academy, um, you know, you're really helping people grow and, and, and make it happen. Mm -hmm what what are the biggest things that you see that prevent people from you know from growing i mean this is the grow show it's all about talking to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. about growth but like it's also i think it's important to like fig address the things that are limiting growth so what do you what do you think are those like those things that just constantly come up i'm, I'm curious it's a great question. Um, I think there's a lot of things. I would say a few um, that really come to mind. I mean, the very first thing is um, that desire to be in a comfort zone. So, uh, I, and I, we talked about it. I mean, I think the more you are um, okay with stepping outside that comfort zone, the better you will deal with the uncertainties because they're going to be there. There's going to be economy. There's going to be... Uh, people you don't know, things that will happen, you know, life will get in the way and you need to just ride the wave and, and figure out what it is that you can control and continue. The other thing that I noticed, and for us, um, with the leapers, we call them, um, it's very, very important because again, we, we are, um, engineered to go with perfection. Yeah. And that is exactly what's holding us back. Again, education system has taught us that we need to be perfect, but need to have the perfect rate. And the truth is that's not true. You're never going to have the perfect LinkedIn or the perfect resume or the perfect post or the perfect article or whatever it is. So the only difference is that pace in which you're moving. And that's really, really important. It was actually interesting because I managed, um, I found myself mentoring in two of the biggest startup accelerators in the world. And, um, what was interesting there is the number of decisions founders can make. So you could see right off the bat, who are the founders that are going to make it and who are the founders that won't. So we were really yeah. early in a stage where we were just mentoring them in the beginning. And it was really, really interesting to see it. So the, the, good, the good founders would make decisions within hours or days, right? Like it was moved really, really fast, while some would take weeks or months to move and just yeah. from that fear, yeah. just from that lack of perfection. And um, so what's interesting is within those weeks, you know, we would see the great founders already, you know, meeting clients and, you know, morphing their products and finding the market fit. And it was amazing to see their pace. And then the others, um, they would barely be ready with their first email by the time we were done. And you could just see that just the number of decisions, don't get me wrong, they all make mistakes. But the question right. is how fast are you fixing those mistakes and moving forward? And yeah. that has been vast. Um, that's interesting. It's funny because I mean, you know, it's like, but the mistakes are good because that's where you learn, right? And and it means you're also taking action and at least doing something where you're making the mistake. I mean, obviously you want to limit them if you can, but 
But if you're not making any mistakes and not taking any action, then like exactly. you're and, not and moving. So comes from, from from the clarity comes from action, not just thinking about it, dreaming about it. You know, uh, yes, you're gonna wrap yourself with expert, and you're gonna try to minimize the mistakes. But the only way to really move forward is to just do. Um, and that is probably the biggest thing that is limiting people either to leap to leadership or to entrepreneurship or wherever they want to go next. And, I, you know, I also believe in creating these big portfolio careers to diversify your income and diversify the, the just have more fun in life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, people, when, when they're stuck on trying to get it all perfect and never make decisions, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's, you know, being an entrepreneur is just, it's, it's, it's every day you're, 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 you're making decisions. I mean, you have to be like a master at decision making, you know, and when I get home, I, I don't, I don't want to make any more decisions. I could tell you that my wife knows that. And I'm like, don't ask me any questions. You know, if it's like a decision with something that like, just you make the decision, I'm, I'm all good, whatever, whatever you want to do. And she knows that she's like, you know, <laughs> she gives me my like decompression time, which is, which is a big help. But mm -hmm. I mean, that is so true, done. Joe. That is yeah. so true because, again, there's a limit to the amount of decisions, and I really don't care what we eat dinner right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like whatever. I'm, I'm in. You know, <laughs> oh, you know, you're good. <laughs> exactly. You know, and and the perfection thing you talked about. I mean, it, it, it's 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 um it's a real thing. I you know we we were randomly talking about um, the book traction and, you know, we follow EOS in our business, which is from the book traction, but a, a big part of the EOS process is not trying to get to a hundred percent, just like getting to 80% because you're never going to get to a hundred percent, you know, really in, in your business. And, and, um, and you just always like, if you're trying to be too perfect with every part of your business, it's just going to lead to burnout. You're going to burn your team out. And, it's just not, it's not realistic and, and no one's going to do it a hundred percent the way that you're going to do it. So get comfortable with 80% and keep it moving. And honestly, by the time you get to 80%, you have to figure out half the time, a whole new strategy or process, the way things move so quickly to that. Exactly. And the truth is it's going to take about 20% of the effort to get to 80%. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. Yeah. And let's work like 20% get to the 80 and move on versus Try to get to that perfection, which is never going to happen anyway. Um, yeah. And it's just like you said, it's going to burn everybody out. Nobody can innovate. Everybody's afraid to fail. Like it's it. There's so many mistakes that come from that perfection. Um, can't even stress it enough. And, and things are just moving so fast today. So those people that took months to make a decision, like by the time you make the decision, the market could have shifted at that point. I mean, it, it, just thinking about the environment these since COVID these last three years. The, the market's been just shifting, cut, still shifting. So, you know, and, and depending on your just industry. Said, Joe, is so spot on because especially now with AI, I, you know, I, I do believe we're looking at the biggest shift this century, oh. seen, probably since the website, right? Um, and the truth is, I think it's going to move at a pace that we don't even understand the yeah. education system has no chance now like even if it didn't have chance before it has no chance to teach us technologies that don't exist ideas that never been invented it is not preparing up for us it's us that we'll need to learn to reinvent ourselves sleep again and again be adaptive be agile learn the biggest technologies get on the momentum otherwise again we lose relevant at the speed of light now we've never yeah. seen anything like this yeah and you know it's funny because <laughs> I think it's interesting because parents are so like with their kids on devices and things. And I'm like, they need to learn devices, you know, like, and they, I want them to know how to use them because they're going to have to figure like how, how to do all these things. Cause half the stuff, you know, you're, 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 you're not going to be adding it on even a calculator anymore. You're going to be talking to an AI. I mean, it's just, if, if you don't get how to use these technologies, I think you're going to be, I think you're limiting your, your, your uh, child. You know, you're so. so, I totally believe you're right, Joe. I, it, I, I see my kids the way they look at technology. It's almost an extension of their brain. 
Yeah. They're not yeah. looking at it the same as I do. I need to think about searching. They don't think about. They just do. And yeah. I think the way they're in interacting with technology is something that we need to actually look at very, very closely and see what of that we need to actually adopt. Um, because again, they're the one who are relevant, not us. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of interesting to see it. Um, and, and just see how much it is giving them. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you know, too, like what they're doing with it, how they're using it, I think is important, but I, I think there's an embracing thing there that's going to yeah. be important. And I, I think, I mean, it's just got, it's going to be important for us. You know, like if you haven't checked out chat GPT yet, I mean, you gotta, it's like, <laughs> you gotta get, you gotta get moving. Um, yeah. I, I, I needed something the other day and I was just getting stuck on writing something. And I just like went to chat GPT and it mm -hmm. spun it up in three seconds. And, and then I took it and, and, and put it into my own, you know, words, but it at least helped me get started, you, you know? For sure. I mean, it's, first of all, this is, you know, the, the estimates are that about 70% of the jobs as we know them today will morph, eliminate, be changed. So first of all, we need to understand this is real. There's a cliff coming and we better look at it because again, either we jump on the horse or we're, we're losing relevance. Um, and you brought up the kids. I just thought, you know, I literally, you know, an hour ago, um, you know, my, my kid wasn't feeling well, I was giving her something that I need for work anyway. <laughs> just like, instead of TikTok, do this. And yeah. she edited a video at a speed that I have never seen before. And I'm pretty techie. Wow. And I, I, you know, these are the type of things that, and I, and again, I have an admin, but that, it would have taken her <laughs> weeks. <laughs> yeah. so I'm just like now thinking, it's like, there is something here that we better jump on that wagon of technology um, faster than we think, even if it's out of our comfort zone, even if we don't like technology, even if it scares the heck out of us, find a way, play yeah. with it. You can create your own GPT now, like you can create command, like there's so many things and it's moving every day. Yeah. Every day yeah. this is changing. You can create your own customized things and uh, give it to your client. There's endless things. If you don't jump on it, you're leaving behind. Yeah, you're gonna get smoked for sure. No, I couldn't agree. So, yeah. so tell me, so tell me about Leap Academy. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, you know, learn, uh, learn more. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So again, when I was leaping again, again, again from my very deep downhill spiral, I realized that it actually like I'm doing the same steps. I'm just doing them again and again, again. And my only question was, can I teach this? So I tried it for a few. It, it was amazing to see that every single person who is following the same, again, I'm an engineer, right? I had to engineer this thing. Um, and every single person that was following the steps just saw amazing results. Now, my biggest issue is when I was in the downhill spiral, the solution that I was finding are either very motivational, like, ooh, ooh, you can do it. And I knew I could do it. Like, I'm, I'm a motivated person. I just didn't know how. Um, the other option was people that didn't really inspire me and didn't really walk the walk to the levels that I want. And that didn't inspire me for success. And what I wanted to do is Leap Academy is really make sure that there's a home for every single person who is very, very driven and either feeling stuck in their career or feeling like they want to do more. I want them to go to this really engineered way to completely catapult, to create a portfolio career, to create the reputation, create the thought leadership, the legacy that they want, and really create the freedom that they want because it's more about the freedom to choose. Um, because this is my choice. We're both retired. My husband is choosing to bike in, you know, all over Europe, and I'm choosing to be here and working harder than I ever worked and changing thousands of lives every, you know, all the time. And so we're, you know, just seeing these lives transform and the possibilities and people that are better leaders now and feeling great and better parents now and can afford the big things that they always wanted. It just makes my heart, you know, so happy. Um, That's amazing. And, and, and is it really kind of like the, is it just, is it focused kind of on the, the mindset, the uncertainty, like overcoming the fear? Is that a big part of like someone could expect going through um, your academy? 
great question, Joe. It's a, it is a combination. So again, one of the things that um, you know annoyed me is that things were usually focused either only on mindset or only on strategies or only on like, but nothing really combined all of them. So this was really a way for me to bring all this combination of a very, very engineered process with very, very specific strategies together with the support, together with, by the way, with a big network because people will introduce themselves, each other will practice interviews with each other, will open doors, will co-found things together. So the network is a big part because everything we're going to find now is going to be in the hidden market. Like from a certain stage, a certain age, a certain titles, like we don't find things from job boards. It's going to be all in the hidden market. Um, Co-founding, speaking, advisory boards, these are never going to be, you know, published in a board. So you really need to start playing in that hidden market to create those big results and the mindset coaching, the branding coaching, all of that. So for me, it's like almost like a whole transformation that I honestly wish they taught in colleges and schools because I think mm. every single person, I do believe that this is going to be the most important skill for the future of work. And people that don't know how to reinvent themselves and leap again and again, make it, make it into a habit, they're going to fall behind. Um, so I hope to touch and inspire and help as many people as I can, as fast as I can, um, so that they can not just stay relevant, but excel and create an incredible life. That's it. And, and, and two things I want, one, the hidden market, the find the hidden market and what you mean by that. Cause that's, I think I know what you mean, but I'm curious yeah. to hear like what, what you mean by that. Yeah. So, I mean, great question. I mean, the hidden market is basically who thinks about you when you're not in the room. I mean, we all have a brand. The question is, what is it? Mm. And is it according to what you want to be known for, or is it according to what you've been 20 years ago? So and the beautiful thing is that we have the power now to control the narrative. The yeah. problem is that most people just don't. So, yeah. so the interesting thing is, again, every single opportunity from a certain position, a certain age, a certain, especially when it's crowded like this right now, um, it's all going to come from the hidden markets, right? If somebody's looking for an advisor, for a speaker, for, you know, a CEO oh, that is running a certain company, right? For the small business, if they're looking for something like this, um, it's usually like, hey, who do you know that can be incredible for this, right? And Got if it. people Got don't it. have the top of mind, you're not coming up. But the question is, how are you nurturing this? And it's not a one-time thing. It's like, how do you constantly stay top of mind, stay relevant, create that personal brand to really push it to the next level? Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, almost everybody has to, you don't have to be like an influencer, but yeah. I think in, in today, everyone needs to, I try and talk to my team about this. Like you, you really have to create your own, you know, little yeah. brand. And, and I, I just had this conversation actually two days ago, like basically like you can create your own avatar of like who you are, you know, and we have the ability to do that. But you, you. I mean, you said it. Most people just don't ever do that or think about it. Exactly. And you know, I think the ones that are great at building themselves, like, like, so the old school way is like networking, right? Like the great networkers, they did the 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 most business, you know, in in any right. whether it's sales career or or business or whatever. But now you can do that. What's amazing is now you can do that when not necessarily even having to go anywhere. Which right. Is I mean, it's very powerful. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. So, and again, so people really sometimes like, but I don't like to post or it doesn't make me feel comfortable, etc. But there's 20 or more ways to build your reputation. Just find yeah. one that works for you, right? I mean, there's podcasts, yeah. you can be on TV, you can write something, you can be in an article, yeah. you can speak, you can be on panels, you can volunteer, you can be on a board. Like, I can go on and on. Um, you just need to do kind of what we talked about <laughs> just yeah. need to do. And when you control that narrative, you're top of mind. People understand. And not only that they, they will introduce you, they want to introduce you. They, it's their honor to bring you in. Yeah. And that makes a difference. It also makes a difference in how much you can charge. It makes it worth, you know, how much you're worth, your perception is everything. And it just moves the needle again and again. 100%. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's important. And um, it's a big miss by everyone, especially in today too, where everyone's so lackadaisical. Um, even the you know people are, are dressing in half pajamas. Like I mean, it's just the just like the presentation has really dwindled. So, but what I think about that is that if you're willing to just do like this much extra, 
you stand out of the crowd, you, you know, because no yeah. one's willing to go out of their way today. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> and the truth is, that's how I found this, Joe. So if I'm being really honest, I was already vice president and I was, I did not have a brand at all. I was putting exactly zero on my own brand. Everything I devoted to the company that I was with. And when I left that company or more like <laughs> try to leave the, you know, got into my downhill spiral, when I did try to raise capital for my startup, I was going around to different venture capitalists and nobody would put money in. And I didn't know why. And eventually, and it's really hard to get feedback, but eventually somebody actually said, look, there's not a lot of women that did what you claim you've done. You know, I built five sides. It's multi, you know, 15 million annual revenue, et cetera. There's not a lot of women that have done it. So either you were the admin or this is not true. And he basically put it right flat in my face. And he didn't mean when I necessarily hurt me. It was more like I didn't tell my story. My Got story it. is known by the boards, that my story is known by this, you know, the CEO, but except for that, nobody knows. So yeah. it's my fault that I did not build my brand. I completely forgot myself and the journey. And suddenly I got this like big spank in my face and said, you know what? It's my fault. I basically gave zero to personal growth and that's what it looks like. And from yeah. that point on, I will do everything I can to make sure nobody makes the same mistakes that I did and really leaves at least 5% to your own personal growth, your own personal brand and, to what you want to do next so that you can go chase that dream. And, and with the leap Academy, is it all about like leaping into something else or is it, could it be just leaping within your current career and getting to that next level? It can definitely be the same company. So again, for me, it's about getting everybody to understand them always be leap ready. So always have all your ducks on a row, know what you want and have your brand aligned, have your LinkedIn aligned, have it all your confidence aligned. If all you want to do is get to that next level of leadership within your same company or a different title, a different, you know, a little more increase it, you know, money increase, et cetera. That's all fine. As long as you know that you're in the driver's seat, you're intentional, strategic about your career, and you're starting to play at a different level and you don't wait for things to come your way. You're always leap ready. And that's where you start leaping again, and again, as a habit and starting creating this amazing portfolio career for yourself that just creates an amazing life. But it could start with, let me just get another title um, or just a 20 K increase. You know, that's totally fine. If this is where you want to start. Yeah. Or drive or, you know, building yourself up and driving more sales and, you know, earning more. Yeah. And, I think what you what you what I'm hearing is too just also the world's changing and you have to be willing to constantly make these changes. It's we're not in the times of like I started at this company and I put my 25 years in and because I was there for five years, 10 years, 15 years, I was able to just keep going up the ladder or maybe not. But you you have to like you have to keep bringing value back to the marketplace in order to excel today. Absolutely, Joe. And I do believe that we are going to see people leap in some capacity, whether it's in the same company, different function, different title, different industries, etc. We will see people leap again, again, every year or two. Yeah. And yeah. again, when you're not moving forward, you're not stuck, you're actually moving backwards and losing relevance. So you need to start being really intentional, strategic about your career, no matter what. Just yeah. be always ready so that when those opportunities up, even when your boss asks you, what do you want next? Don't be quiet about it. <laughs> you know, like know yeah. what you want. And I yeah. can't tell you how many times somebody asks me and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, that's yeah not a exactly. Good yeah, well, that's not, that doesn't sound so exciting and motivating. Like, oh, I was going to pick you for the position and you just, you drop the whole ball and fumble. You know? <laughs> and I yeah. don't know how many opportunities I missed this way, right? So. So, you know, I will try to take all my mistakes and make sure that nobody else ever makes them again. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, this is really great. And uh, I really appreciate it. You know, appreciate you being on the show and all said today. I really enjoyed the combo. And, and I think you said a lot of, you know, um, I don't want to say simple things, but it's almost like they're obvious things and they just get lost. So I think it was like, I think it's good stuff for people to hear and to think about because these are things that you have to constantly keep doing and you don't just do them once and then they're done for the rest of your life. You need to keep doing these things in order to keep growing 
and to right. keep leaping and to keep making it happen. So I, I definitely appreciate all said. It was a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you, Joe. Well, Love having you. Uh, Love being here. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And, and you know, so we always talk about, you know, uh, we end off with what would be like one growth tip or growth advice or growth quote that you would uh, share, uh, you know, with, uh, with folks watching. The one thing that I would say is um, I have my own coach. It changed everything for me. I was the person that never needs help and I can always figure it out. Um, now I will pay as much money to wh whoever can get me there faster and higher. I will always get there faster. And again, the biggest cost in our life is always the money we're not making. And as much as you start understanding that, you understand that every dollar that you can, you need to put in on help more than investing. Because again, I'm investing in a lot of stuff. But the one thing that I will never say no to is investing in myself. That will yeah. always 5x, 10x itself. I don't know how much x. So yeah, um, and, and that's agree kind of more. somebody who's never was willing to get somebody's hand. And now I will just not go without it. So I, I couldn't agree more. I've got a coach and it's it's um, it's been a big part of the constant growth and success and yeah. and, and keeping me on course. Um, so <laughs> it's uh, it's super necessary. I, I appreciate that. How um, how can folks, um, you know, people watching, you know, find you, Alana? Um, yeah. So um, Leap Academy does. Com. Um, we're there. I'm also on LinkedIn. You can search for Ilana Golan. Um, and we have free trainings that we give. We have free career strategy calls with our team. So we love giving back. Um, so just reach out, um, LinkedIn website, wherever you can. And um, love to help if I can. Awesome. Well, good stuff. We'll go check out Alana um, at Leap Academy. And uh, again, thanks for being on the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep growing and keep taking those leaps. Thank you, Joe. Be well. Take care now.